Welcome to the Infinite Socket TFC1 casting process video. We want to disclaim the fact that your casting method may vary from what you see in this video specifically, but we want to impress upon you the fact that there are four clinical requirements required for every order that no practitioner can vary from. Those being anatomical markings, alignment markings, casting in the desired flexion and adduction angles, and marking your name on your impression. Once you have the patient wrapped in their casting sock, you're going to want to place your indelible markings on the patient. And I like to start proximal. I recommend that you do that. What you do is you start with the patient's trochanter and create a nice square so you can see exactly where that trochanter is going to go. So that way when you bring in your trochanteric donut, it will be right on the spot. Next, if the patient has a lot of variance, a short femur and a lot of tissue beyond their femur in their limb, you want to mark where the end of their femur is. That way you know right where to put your femoral pad. That way you can adjust the height so it fits in there perfectly. Highly recommend that you do this as a dry run before you have wet plaster. Next, you're going to want to mark their line of progression with a small X in the front. When wrapping your patient's residuum, with your plaster or fiberglass impression, it's often really tempting to over tighten with your plaster impression material. We caution you not to wrap too tightly. You wanna use moderate pressure because if you wrap the residuum too tightly, it will elongate your residuum and it will end in the socket being too long. When the patient is now in a seated position, you can begin to apply the wet plaster. What I recommend is have the patient scoot their rear end to the edge of the chair and that way you can take your plaster, your first phase of the plaster, all the way up into the patient's perineum. And then you can bring in your, your brim second to that. Get the patient into a standing position and you'll bring around your brim. And what you wanna do with your brim is you wanna capture that trochanter and you wanna try to capture as much of the ischium as you can in this first step. If you can't get it all, that's fine. You can capture it with a splint. But the idea is that you wanna smooth in that brim. What you're gonna to wanna to do is bring in your trochanteric donut you're going to want to make sure that that donut defines your line of progression. The side of that donut should be right in line with parallel bars if your patient's standing up in parallel bars. And it will do a very good job when this impression is removed from the patient to define your anterior, your posterior, your medial, and your lateral really, really well. Take note that as you do this, you're going to want to have the patient's limb in your desired flexion angle as you're pressing your trochanteric donut in. Reach around across to the contralateral hip and you're going to want to massage that donut in quite a bit and that will result in a really good visible pre-modification that we've made. And you can see it right there in the side of the plaster impression. And you'll notice that we needed to add a splint to make sure we captured the patient's ischium really well. So while they're still in a standing position, we add a nice vertical splint. And while that splint is still workable and nice and soft, bring in your ischial casting tool, just like you did as you took your measurements. The patients now experience what it's like, so you wanna make sure you bring it in there and get their feedback. Bring them back to your desired flexion and adduction angle as you're capturing that seat. So once it's all set up, you can remove your trochanteric donut, you can remove your ischial seat, and your impression's done. You can now cut them out of their casting shorts and remove your impression. And what you can see is the donut has created a nice way of capturing our desired flexion angle. Don't forget to mark on the outside and inside of the mold where your anterior is. And you can also see exactly where their ischial seat was. You can see that it's right down in with the long axis of the limb. What you'll notice is that with respect to that line of progression, that seat should sit at a 60 degree angle in most of our male patients. And you'll see that we, we missed just that medial corner of that ischial seat, but that's okay. We can add that right back in. By way of summary, remember there are four clinical requirements with your infinite socket TF C1 impression. Anatomical markings. Make sure you've marked your trochanter and your femur. Number two, your alignment markings are very important. Make sure you mark anterior, posterior, medial and lateral on your impression. Number three, make sure you cast it in your desired flexion and adduction angles. And number four, make sure that your name is marked on the impression very clearly and legibly.